Howdy folks. So today I was cleaning out um, some old stuff and I came across a couple of these. These are uh, laptop battery packs for uh, quite old Toshiba laptops. I think this one was out of a uh, Satellite 320 CDT. So that was an original Pentium um, MMX uh, laptop. I think it was like 32 megs RAM, 1 gig hard drive. I still have it. Um, it was probably, I think it was my very first computer, uh, and I, uh, I have it somewhere. Uh, and I have a couple extra batteries for it, mostly because I, uh, the, a lot of stuff broke in that machine, and I sort of parted out other machines to build it up and uh, get it working again. And uh, I have extra batteries. Most of these batteries are not very good, uh, obviously, as you can imagine, given their age. Uh, so I thought I would take uh, one of them apart, which I've done here, and uh, if you look inside on the plastics, we have uh, what looks to be a 1996 manufacture date. So, I mean, these batteries are quite old. Um, I mean, we're looking at 19, you know, 19 years here. So these cells here... Uh, and by the way, these were not broken when I uh, opened the, the pack, because I opened the pack this way, so they were sitting here. So these two cells have come unsoldered from their little tabs here. Uh, and I feel like this probably happened uh, before I took it apart. Uh, so I think, I think these cells uh, may have, just from vibration, may have come loose uh, during use which I think is quite interesting. And it might have something to do with the cell's poor performance. Uh, obviously, if two banks, because uh, obviously you can see here there's three cells arranged one way, then three the other way, then three the other way. So, uh, and these are obviously lithium ion cells. So, uh, it, obviously, this would reduce the capacity of these two banks greatly if that's not a good connection. So, uh, I, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pack apart I'm going to take all the cells out, because as it stands, it's not very useful to me. And I want to measure the voltage of each of these cells. I don't think this pack has been charged in probably at least five years. So I want to see what the voltage of this is. Um, it, it would be quite interesting uh, to see how many cells survived, possibly charge some of them up and do discharge tests on the cells. Now, I haven't, uh, I don't have a, a battery charger, so I could basically just connect these to a power supply, set the voltage... Uh, and you know, let it charge and just monitor it manually. Uh, I don't unfortunately have a, a battery charger for lithium ion. I only have a nickel metal hydride chargers, so unfortunately I'll have to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, these cells, by the way, are uh, Sony uh, Energy Tech. Um, let's see, is there a good part number? There we go. So that's uh, that's the cell that we've got, and. Uh, They've got, obviously these look like two, uh, they're either resistors or they're protection diodes. I want to say that they're protection diodes. They should be protection diodes. And we have a little board at the top. There's this uh, component on these two red leads taped to the cell, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be a temperature sensor. Uh, and the board just has a couple ICs on it. And uh, this interesting uh, device here it's a metal package device in a plastic housing. It's two terminal. Not entirely sure what that is. Uh, I'm, when I, I'm going to rip this board off and find out what that is, because uh, that's kind of an intriguing package. But yeah, it's just a battery pack. I mean, it's not too interesting. But yeah, the cells uh, definitely are not very well attached uh, compared to some of the other uh, battery packs I've taken apart. So I'll take out the cells and uh, read their uh, measurements. Okay, so I've got my meter here, and uh, I want to just, before I take the whole thing apart, I want to see these cells that have come undone. I want to see if their voltage is different from the common voltage of the rest of the pack, and that might give me an indication of how long these cells have been uh, detached for. So 3.9 volts, that's, uh, that's not bad for what should be a 3.7 volt lithium. Uh, doing this is not too easy. 3.9 again. 
And this one, this one I think I just broke, so I'm, I doubt this would be any different. 3.9 again. So, across, across this bank is 3.9. Across this bank is 3.9. Across this bank is 3.9. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if this controller up here still works. Let's across this. That's nah, nothing. Uh, there were terminals on here. Uh, what about this one? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, uh, eleven point seven, eleven point seven three volts. And this pack is supposed to be ten point eight volts. So yeah, that's actually that's actually not bad. I'm kind of surprised it. I, I would have expected this this to have some like seriously dead dead cells be like you know six volts or something. That's interesting. Thirty six hundred milliamp hours divided by nine cells, and that would be our capacity per cell. I I really wish I had a battery charger that could do discharge because then I can actually connect these cells up, do a discharge like charge them up, then do a discharge test and see how much of the original capacity they still have after nine. Years, because that would be a really interesting test, um, just just to see how these cells really fared. And I mean, I don't know what the history of this pack is. I don't know if it was kept charged all the time, if it had a lot of cycles on it. I don't know. I mean, I know that uh, when it was in when when one of these one of these packs is a problem. I don't know which one of these packs I have. I have three of them. I think I don't know which one was in my machine. So I don't. I know. I know the way I dealt with my laptop. It was plugged in almost all the time, uh, but I didn't let it trickle charge, so I unplugged it when the battery got full and things like that. I know the way I treated my battery, but I mean, I don't know which one of these cells, is, which one of these packs is the battery I had and which one I just got, uh, you know, through random parts. So I don't know the history of this, but uh, I would like to know the capacity of the cells. I might try and build up some sort of maybe just a, a, crude, uh, a crude way of measuring their capacity just to see if I can get some relative figures. So I kind of want you to think for just a second. If this pack is 3,600 milliamp hours, and there are three sets of three cells, then that means that each cell must be 1,200 milliamp hours in terms of capacity. So when you compare that to a pack nowadays, which I mean, packs that are smaller than this, you would expect over 5,000 milliamp hours out of each out of them. So I mean, most of these cells, these are. Uh, 18650 cells I believe and I mean normally these things are going for mm, 2400 milliamp hours or so so these are these are quite uh, quite low in capacity but again you know this just sort of shows how much battery technology has improved even in the last couple of years so yeah, they've welded some of the sides pretty well, but obviously other ones uh, not so much. So I will extract all the cells and uh, come back when it's done. So I've just finished taking the uh, batteries, uh, the cells out, and uh, I noticed the uh, these diodes here. They're made by Microtemp, 250 volt, 10 amp, with capped on everywhere, as it should be. Uh, I just want to correct what I said earlier. These aren't uh, 18650 cells, these are 17670 cells. I should have noticed that, they're not the same size. Um, and 17670s, I believe, are just in, are, are always inherently lower capacity. Uh, I don't think these are nearly as common uh, as the 18650s nowadays. So uh, I'm going to test each of these cells and uh, see if any of them are uh, different voltages than the other. I'd expect them all to be the same because up until now they've all been connected in parallel basically, or at least in banks of three, and we saw that all the banks were basically the same, so let's, uh, let me check those. So I just want to do a uh, discharge uh, test on one of these with something that's moderate current. Uh, I'd really like to use a hobby motor or something, but I can't seem to find one at the moment. So I got out this, this is my uh, Peltier element, so uh, if you're unfamiliar with a Peltier, um, or a Peltier, or whatever the hell you want to call it, it's a thermoelectric cooler, so it's basically uh, a ceramic substrate with a bunch of uh, semiconductors inside and uh, you apply a voltage uh, and uh, via what's known as the Seebeck effect 
it effectively pumps heat from one side to the other according to the polarity and uh, it's mounted to a heat sink so right now it'll pump stuff from this side the exposed side through it into the heat sink where you can then have a fan and exhaust it they use these in those little coolers and stuff uh, that you can buy those camping coolers uh, they're generally pretty crappy for that um, but they're, they're they're quite an interesting technology and I, I, I'd uh, recommend just picking one up just to play around with it um, they can be used to heat things but generally they're used to cool things because heating things is I mean, trivial um, and these things are they can be quite expensive this one that I have is rated for 150 watts and it goes up to I think 15 volts input so this should be uh, not a problem for it now I can't really measure the current unfortunately this meter is a clamp meter and it only measures with the clamp which is kinda dumb um, I really need to get a proper meter but uh, I'm gonna have to do that off camera uh, can I get this all in frame maybe so this does DC so we'll see if I can measure the current that's going through this. So that's 2.2 amps. 2 amps and dropping. That's not bad. If it can supply, I mean, it's... Well, that's pretty cold, actually. It's not bad for, for that low of an input uh, voltage. So we... It drops, but I mean, it seems to stabilize around, uh, I don't know. One point eight, one point nine amps. I mean, it's not it's not heating up in any way, but that's getting nice and cool. I wonder what the voltage is now. I don't think I should have unplugged these. Three point eight. So it's, it's dropped a little bit from the 3.9, but I mean, that's expected. Now I don't know what the discharge rate of these cells is actually rated to be, so I'm not sure if I should be pulling 2 amps from these or not, uh, but since I don't really care, I think I'm going to do it anyway. And I'll just, uh, I'll run it for a while and see if I can, uh, I can discharge the cell, and uh, then we'll, we'll see how it recovers from that. So I've been holding this cell on it for uh, maybe about two minutes now and uh, under under load it drops to uh, just below three volts and it keeps dropping obviously the longer you go but it seems to always rebound to around 3.7 now. The cell is mildly warm I mean it's not it's not like stone cold but uh, it's not not it feels like it's been handled for a while so I'm not sure if that's actually just me holding on to the cell that's made it warm, but anyway. So I'm gonna put this aside, I'm gonna do this sort of the same thing to each cell and see if I can find any like, immediately bad cells. Um, and then uh, I'll probably do a, a better test later. So I've just finished uh, doing some preliminary testing on these and all the cells appear to be uh, perfectly healthy. I mean, these three are actually a little bit better than the rest, or at least they're more charged than the rest. Uh, so maybe they were one one of the three in a pack and uh, I don't know something like that but anyway um, they're all very very similar and uh, I mean it looks like they've got at least some life left so I think what I might do is uh, probably go on eBay and get a, a cheap um, uh, lithium-ion charger maybe a, a BMS something like that and uh, I want to get a couple of those cheap um, 3.7 volt to 5 volt USB boost converters. Uh, you can buy them as little modules with uh, USB uh, A female sockets on them. And I want to get one of those and basically just build my own USB power bank made exclusively out of recycled cells. So uh, I, I think I'll just, uh, you know, if, if I, uh, depending on how I, whether I get a BMS or, and, and how that one works. Uh, I'll take uh, some varying number of cells, put them in a little project box, and uh, I can just, you know, build a extremely cheap uh, and basically, I mean, almost sort of throwaway, but, uh, you know, you could just grab more cells out of dead laptop batteries. I mean, there's an infinite supply of dead laptop batteries out there. Um, so I might make something that's, you know, easy to... Uh, 
easy to replace the cells. I don't really, I don't have a, a portable uh, USB power bank. I don't actually find myself charging my devices all the time. Uh, I'm actually pretty good on that. Uh, I don't think I've ever had my phone die on me um, between charges overnight, which is, you know, for some people, extremely difficult. But I don't have a problem with it. So I would just probably use it as a, a portable power source so that I can run random USB stuff wherever I am. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably uh, order a couple things, and uh, maybe uh, you'll see some more of these batteries soon. Thanks for watching.